All right, welcome. In, in this video, I want to take a look at some pushdown automatas. We're going to design some pushdown automata uh, following our example from that last video. Uh, and for some of the maybe common uh, or more common context free uh, languages that we might encounter. So here's one here uh, that we could make a context free grammar for. Um, w is a palindrome. Maybe I should say uh, our alphabet here is the binary alphabet, uh, just to make things a little bit simpler on us. And I wanna build a push down automata that's gonna accept strings that are palindrome. So I'm gonna make a start state here, and I'm going to start by using a, a design pattern that I introduced in the last video, which is at the very beginning, what we're going to do is we're going to push a dollar sign onto our stack. And as I'm working here, it can be convenient when we are new to using push down automata to remind ourselves what this notation means. So what this is, is I'm going to put symbol, comma, pop, arrow, push. Okay, so what this is telling us is this is the symbol and maybe I'll put scan here. So this is what we the input symbol that came in and we scanned it. We're reading it right now. And then this is the operation we're doing to the stack. We're gonna pop something, we're gonna push something. So what this is saying is the input symbol that we're scanning in is nothing. We're gonna do this as an epsilon transition. What are we gonna pop off the stack? Nothing, okay. What are we gonna put on the stack? A dollar sign, okay. All right, now what I wanna do is I wanna make a state here that in our palindrome, let's look at a pal. I'm going to look at two palindromes here, 0, 1, 1, 0, or 0, 1, 0, 1, 0. These are both palindromes. One's even length and one's odd length, and I want to be able to make sure I can handle both. What's happening here is as I put symbols on the stack, I want to put the, sim the si symbol 0 and 1 on the stack, and then I want to pop them off, a 1, or a zero and match them up so that it's like a pairing and a pairing. Same thing here, a pairing and a pairing, but maybe we ignore that middle symbol. That's what we need to think about for the odds. So what that means is when I put a zero, when I read a zero, I want to, let me check here, pop nothing off, push something on. I want to push something on. I want to push a zero on. And when I read a one, I want to push a one on. Okay, so that might read them in. Now at some point, I need to move to a new state. And my new, my new state, I'm going to move here. When am I going to do that? I'm going to start with the even case here. I'm going to want to do that when I do nothing to the stack, absolutely nothing. I'm just gonna do an epsilon transition at some point, let non-determinism find that middle bit for me, and I'm gonna to move to this new state. And then once I'm in that new state, when I'm reading a zero, now I'm matching them up, I wanna pop off zeros. And when I read a one, I'm matching them up, I wanna be able to pop off ones. If I'm reading a zero and I have a one on top of my stack, there's no transition here, that means reject. If I'm reading a one and there's a zero on top of my stack, there's no transition here. That means reject, okay? So now let's imagine I was in this case. So up here, I read the zero, put it on the stack. I read the one, I put it on the stack. I move the epsilon transition. I now read the one, pop it off the stack. I now read the zero, I pop it off the stack. Remember stacks are backwards, right? So if I go zero of the stack and I put one on the stack, that's the order I put them on, but the order I take them off is backwards. So that's how we get the palindrome nature happening, right? So we'll take those off. If I can take both of them off, then I should be able to expose the dollar sign and be able to take it off and enter into my accept state. And in fact, I've now got a machine that will accept this string, but we haven't got it to handle this string yet. Okay, now why not? Well, when it moves from the uh, pushing to the popping, it does so on an epsilon, but we want it to be able to ignore a potential middle symbol as well. So I'm gonna add two new rules here, zero, epsilon goes to epsilon, still do nothing to the stack, one, 
epsilon goes to epsilon. That allows us to follow that middle transition even on a symbol, but only one symbol, and we can ignore one symbol. Which symbol? The middle symbol. Okay, that's it. All right. So um, this now modified will handle this string here. We'll also let's do a couple special cases. Okay, is epsilon in this language? It's a palindrome. Okay, so we can follow this to put the dollar sign on. We can follow the epsilon transition to be here. Since we've done no pushing or popping other than the dollar sign, we can take the dollar sign off and yes, we can get to the accept state. So good, epsilon's in there. What about just the zero or just the one? Those are palindromes, same thing. I can put my dollar sign on, follow the zero or one by itself, take the dollar sign off and boom, I can make it to the accept state. So it looks like we've got all of the interesting palindromes in there, at least I've done a couple tests and I feel confident. I, I know I can get these two. I can know I can get these four, four uh, three over here. That's five in total. I've done a couple tests. I think I've got it. Okay. That's of course not a proof, but it might be enough for your intuition. All right. Let's take a look at another language quickly here. This is sort of an interesting one. This is an interesting one because it looks like it might not be context free because we have four different blocks of, uh, symbols that we need to keep to keep in track of and often that means we're not context free and we'll see that in a later video. But this one actually does turn out to be context free and that's because we can use the stack in the clever way. Let's just make sure we see that the outer ones, the zeros and the ones need to be held together and then the inner ones need to be kept together in, the, in equal blocks as well. Um, but we can do that all at the same time all using one stack. Um, so let's take a look how. So I want us to start off in the same way. We're going to use that special symbol to mark the bottom of the stack. That's the only way we can uh, effectively make sure that they're equal numbers. And I'm going to start by making a uh, loop here that's going to begin in reading in my zero. So as I get into zero, I'm going to put zeros on my stack to keep track of them as I go. Okay. Now, at some point, I want to move from blocks of zeros to blocks of one. For simplicity, I'm going to do that on an epsilon transition. But now I'm going to start reading in ones. And when I read in ones, I'm actually going to want to put ones on my stack. So that the things on my stack, we're going to get zero, 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 zeros. And then we're going to get ones, 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 ones. These is my n and this is my m. I can remember my n and my m at the same time as long as I have to access my M before my N. You notice the N is buried underneath the M, right? If, if we change this, so this was zero to the N, one to the M, we're, we're in trouble, right? We can't access the M's after the N's, okay? So it's very important that we had them in this order, okay? So this one would not work, okay? So what are we gonna do here? I'm gonna go down because I wanna start moving back. I'm going to say again on an epsilon, I should be able to move from the one, this block of ones to this block of zeros. And now what am I going to do? Well, now I'm reading in these zeros and there are M of them and I want to match them up with the ones that were on my stack that I put on in this state here. So if I'm a zero, I want to read or pop off the ones off my stack. Okay. If I can do that perfectly, there are M of them, then after I read in all these zeros, all these ones are gonna be gone and we'll only have our zeros left on our stack. So again, I'm gonna trust in the epsilon here, move me for, from that last step here. And again, what are we gonna do here? Same thing, another self loop where, okay, what were we reading in? We're reading in the ones but now we're popping off the zeros that we put on in that stack, at the, or sorry, on that state at the beginning. Again, if we're really lucky and our N matched our N and our M matched our M, then we can get here by popping off the dollar sign that we put on at the beginning, which will ensure us that we've had an empty stack at the bottom, okay? So again, what did we do? We just took that first original machine that we looked at and we kind of added two extra states in the inner bit. This is interesting. A lot of PDAs end up having four states or maybe five states in them because they follow this same kind of shape that we saw up here. 
But this one, we had it in two extra states because we're doing a little bit of extra work in there. We've, and we could, we could uh, do this an arbitrary number of finite times, right? So here's another language. We could have zero to the n, one to the m, you know, two to the k, and then we could go zero to the k, one to the m, uh, two to the n. And you'll notice that since the matchup is like this, we're good. We could use the stack in the right way. Or we could use it with a grammar that does something like this, right? Like we can build it from the outside in. So this is another context-free language that we could build a PDA for or a CFG for following this same kind of stuff. All right, I want to finish with one last context-free language that I think is kind of interesting. And maybe we can kind of see how we're going to do this one by taking inspiration from some of the ones we've just finished. This one says that the middle symbol of W is zero. Okay, what that means is you've got a zero in there and then you've got some amount of stuff over here. It doesn't matter what it is, but there are n of them. So I'm going to say sigma to the n and sigma to the n over here. Kind of looks like it's a regular expression, but it's not because we've got this matchup of n's. We're not allowed to do that. Um, so we could build this with a grammar, but we want to do a PDA for it. So let's go ahead and start it out in the same way we've done before by marking the uh, bottom of our stack with the special symbol. Now, we're trying to find the middle symbol. There's two things going on here. One, there has to be a middle symbol. This string, 00, zero doesn't have a middle symbol. This one does, 010, zero, zero, because it's odd. So part of what we know here is there's this kind of has to be an odd length string. Now, that could be part of our machine. It's kind of implicitly going to be part of our machine, but not in the way that we were building it before. Okay. Instead, what I'm going to try and do is I'm going to try and figure out these sigmas as I come in. Now, as I read in a symbol, zero, I want to count how many of them are there are because I want to match up the ends before and the ends after. So I'm going to put something on the stack. Now, what am I going to put on the stack? I could put a zero, but it's arbitrary. So I'm going to just put another symbol on. I'm going to call it X. Okay, and then likewise, if I read in a one, I want to count it as well because we're counting all the symbols coming in, all the sigmas. So I'll put an X, it didn't matter. Okay, but at some point, I want to be able to find the middle symbol. The, the non determinism is going to kick in and find that middle symbol. That middle symbol is a zero. And when I get it, I don't want to do anything to the stack because. I want the ones after the symbol to be the same as the ones before. Okay, so at some point, if I'm reading a symbol, uh, uh, the symbol zero, it's the middle symbol, and I follow this epsilon transition, I'll move from the, this was our pushing state to the popping state. And in the popping state, if I get a zero, I'll pop off an X. If I get a one, same thing, pop off an X. And then if I'm lucky, and there were equal number of x's or an equal number of symbols after this zero as there were before this zero, then I will get an empty stack and I can pop off that dollar sign we put there to signify it, meaning we can enter this new accept state here. Again, what was the condition? If there were equal number of symbols after the zero as there were before the zero, meaning the zero must be the middle symbol. Okay, so our machine now handles that language up there. All right, these were three different examples of pushdown automatas for context-free languages. I hope you enjoyed this video and we'll see you in the next video.